the next session. It's time now for marketing leaders panel. The topic is why brands need a voice strategy. The session is going to be about consumers in India that are adopting voice technology at record rates and brands must keep up or risk losing out to competitors. The panel will discuss how brands should utilize voice assistance technology to deliver customer experiences that are actually helpful. Those taking part are Anushka Shetty, chairperson and group CEO, Gray in Gray Group India. I also have Ajay Dang, a joint executive president, head marketing, Ultratech Simon, Aditya Birla Group joining in. Gaurav Jeet Singh, general manager, Media South Asia, Unilever. Mohit Boitra, co-founder, Air Pollution Action Group. Ravi K. Sharma, vice president, Revenue Ghana. The session is hosted by Ajay Gupte, CEO, South Asia Wavemaker. I'll hand it over to Ajay. Thank you. Thank you, Ravin. And a very good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I am Ajay Gupte, uh, CEO for Wavemaker South Asia. And I welcome you all to our panel discussion on why brands need a voice strategy. Voice technology has offered a convenient and intuitive mode of interaction for millions of It has democratized access for those who cannot read or write. In my personal experience, I have seen some uh, amazing examples of how voice has uh, has been used. Uh, it's it's your driver who who will no longer be typing uh, where his destination is on on the map. He's saying it out. Uh, it's the blue collar worker, the plumber, uh, the painter, the carpenter, who's sending you voice messages on WhatsApp rather than typing out these messages. Voice has allowed these people to communicate using technology, uh, you know, without as has removed all the barriers for them. On the other hand, you have the younger generation, and here I, I refer to my 14-year-old son. His voice to communicate with with search. He he is never typing what he wants to look for. He is just saying it out and trying to get what he wants. Uh, when he's looking for uh, movies, he's just saying out the movie name and he's not typing it out. This is the generation of the future. And like my son and his friends, this generation is going to depend more and more on voice. To effectively communicate with consumers, brands need to embrace behavioral changes like these that consumers are going through. Hence, marketers need to study the impact of voice technology on consumer behavior and should adopt it to make their uh, uh, to make their efforts more uh, effective. Uh, brands across various categories such as CPG and travel have already started integrating voice assistance with their consumer service to help customers. Consumers today are using voice tech to order food, to get directions, to make reservations, book travel, etc. AI and machine learning would further assist businesses to enhance customer experience and improve ROI. Earlier today, you heard Neeraj share key insights from Decoding the Voice Box, a report by Group M in association with Exchange for Media and in Modi. Do download the report. You will find some excellent examples of how brands have effectively used voice tech. We will be discussing some of those examples here today with the experienced marketers who have actually implemented uh, those, uh, those examples. So, panel. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, great to have you here and, and, a, and a privilege to, to be talking along with you. Uh, so uh, I, I start with you, Gaurav. Hi. Gaurav. Hi. Uh, hi. 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 Gaurav, you, you guys have, you know, at Unilever been, been uh, pioneers in voice and you've done some really uh, great work right from uh, many years ago. And, and there's so many examples that have been put in. Uh, I have a few questions for you. How practical is voice application and how can this be diversified across brands, businesses and plans? Uh, could you share some of the examples, some of the wonderful examples that you uh, put together in the past? Oh, so, Jay, thank you. Great meeting you. And, um, uh, you know, I think more than practicality is the necessity of voice that is driving a lot of our use cases. Uh, Jay, if you really see 
where was Kankariwa station that we did around good about 11 years back, like you mentioned, not uh, 11, around 7 years back. Uh, essentially, the, the big learning is that there are uh, the paradox of how you reach consumers on media is pretty uh, pretty startling. And like you mentioned, your sons, uh, people like your son, we can only uh, uh, possibly reach through uh, uh, audio gaming uh, interface uh, in a lot of cases compared to somebody in rural India who you can only use uh, reach through mobile devices and that to voice. I think uh, what is uh, the practicality of this use case is around four or five vectors that I felt are important uh, that we keep in mind. The first one is more to do with the, this paradox that I talked about where consumers can be reached and can't be reached. Uh, and uh, it just makes it possible to reach consumers using mobile devices. I think the second big vector as well as putting uh, together my thoughts uh, before this was that uh, if you really see there is there's a big uh, you know, move uh, where technology has caught up with, with the need for audio. So if you really see how things evolved and radio came in uh, maybe a year before cinema or cinema came a year before uh, uh, before radio did, but what really happened is that uh, what caught up by 1927, good about 30 years after, after radio was when talkies came in. I think what we forget is that audio video expert you know, experience is pretty complete in itself. But what video makes uh, you do is to think a bit more about the content and create your story in your own mind. So the practicality from a consumer point of view is tremendous uh, because what they are looking to do is also be part of the creative process because when they see, when they hear video, they are essentially creating what, uh, what a director would do in an audiovisual interface, right? And thereby it becomes a part of their life. So I think that's one big, uh, big practical uh, reason to really uh, deploy uh, voice at scale. And for us, it's about uh, going to consumers at the bottom of the pyramid, but we're also finding use cases now at the top of the pyramid where, uh, you know, with apps like Clubhouse or even with the, uh, with the, with the kind of interface that uh, Alexa allows for, with the skills that it allows you to evolve, it uh, really builds in another muscle where you can really uh, great, give great consumer experience at a fraction of a cost, because in the past, that experience would have needed big, large call centers where people would sit in and in spite of all the training, you would have a very, very mixed experience for a consumer. And I think what technology catch up on audio allows you to do is to create some really powerful experiences for consumers uh, in, uh, in pretty uh, economical ways. So I think it's hugely practical and made more practical now because of technology. Uh, I hope I answered uh, your last two there. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks, Guruji. Uh, I like, you know, you, you're going across the entire spectrum uh, from, of the, from reaching out to those who can't and those who choose to use voice. Uh, I think that's a that's a very interesting way of being able to manage it. And, and, uh, my, my second question is for uh, Ajay, Ajay Dang. Hi, Ajay. Hi, hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, we, Ajay, we are seeing uh, increased uh, attention to voice based investment. Uh, from, from various brands. Why is it necessary for brands to have a voice integration in today's world? And with your experience, uh, do share how you've been using voice to build trust among the community. So I think uh, from our perspective, the way we look at it, uh, I think voice is uh, genuinely a fairly basic and uh, uh, from from our everyday basis, human perspective, it's a it is the preferred medium of uh, uh, communicating and uh, uh, to each other. Uh, the question is, technology is only catching up to it now, right? So far, I think the main medium uh, was being used as text and other mediums. Of course, the two preferred mediums like Gaurav talked about are the audiovisual mediums. Uh, and therefore, I think it's not a question of why voice. It is the technology catching up to, to uh, something which is fairly basic and fairly fundamental in how we communicate to each other uh, is just, it's just catching up to that. Uh, from our perspectives, uh, I think we realize that uh, there is one, the entire access piece from an audiovisual piece, uh, only two third of India has the direct access on video, on television and so on. And, I think about 70%, close to 65 to 70% of our market, which is individual home builders, uh, comes from rural India. And that's the market which is growing, I think triple the pace of rest of India. Uh, so reaching them, so that's an access point issue. 
The third piece is uh, India is vernacular. And again, there, I think technology hasn't caught up as much, but voice helps bridge that gap across, across with us. Uh, and the third and last piece from our perspective is what we realize that audio and voice, uh, I think stays far more contrary to most belief. I think even more than, than the visual memory, it stays much more with, with consumers is, 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 is something that science tells us. Uh, then there is something which is very specific to our industry, uh, uh, which is uh, cement and home builders and people who are building homes for the first time. Uh, India is no longer home building at the retirement age, our parents' generation 60, 65. Today, home building is happening at 35, 40. Now, here's a person who's building the biggest project of his life doesn't have enough life experience, does not have knowledge, does not have trust who to go to, uh, and therefore needs handholding and assistance. And the wonderful and interesting use case here is uh, he doesn't even know what he doesn't know, right? And such a case, asking somebody to even search for content is, is uh, basically throwing him at the deep end. Versus that having a conversation, having a voice-based conversation with somebody, allowing somebody to interact with you. I think it's an interesting use case that we've figured out, which is unique to our industry and maybe similar problems elsewhere. Uh, what we've seen is that we've deployed this at a fairly, uh, and we've not gone at the shiny end of the scale, but even very basic things like OBD, et cetera, that we've found, we've seen a very significant business results coming out of those uh, for the for the four or five reasons that I talked about, we have uplifts up upwards of twenty to thirty percent among these consumers coming our way, and therefore to us it is it is more uh, some of the suppliers uh, catching up and the technology catching up. What is the uh, essential India consumer uh, uh, need per se and marketer need to communicate to 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 them and interact with them. Thanks, Ajay. And, and you're so right, you know, the, the reason voice is so intuitive and people are are able to get onto it so easily is because that's what we've been used to. We've been used to talking to each other. And, and the simplest case is if I were to be uh, typing out uh, whatever I am telling you, I think it will take me four times the time, right? And which is why uh, I think your driver or or your son or anybody, it's, it's just intuitive, right? We are, we are just discovering what is sitting on our nose, which is, which is that that's the way, almost basic and fundamental means of communication. Perfect. And, and you know, uh, I think you made a very, very valid point about uh, youngsters being actually getting into building homes today. It, it's, it's such an important insight really. And uh, at, at 60, you have so much more understanding and learning and so much you would have seen which you put into play, but at 30, 35, you need that much more assurance. And what you're doing, I'm guessing, is, is really helping with that. So uh, that's a fantastic example. Thanks, Ajay. Uh, you know, talking about, uh, uh, you know, voice being intuitive and uh, audio being uh, a very strong new mode of communication, uh, we have with us uh, Ravi, who's with Rana, and voice and audio is, is his main product. So uh, hi, Ravi. Hi Ajay, thank you Hi. for having Hi. me here. Yeah, thank, thanks, lovely having you. Uh, question for you. So give us some insights yeah, on how consumers are engaging with Dana because I mean, it, it, you, you have all those insights here. Your whole product is about voice and audio. And I believe you, you've integrated voice uh, into your product in a very strong way. So, so do share some insights with us. Sure, thank you. Thank you for having very excited, you know, to push voice and audio as a powerful medium. Uh, so I think our journey started a couple of years back and then one of our consumer researches, uh, you know, we found two key aspects of consumer behavior, the way they were interacting with uh, our app. And the first one was that not everyone is very comfortable typing in, you know, five inch mobile screen, you know, when they're looking for content. Uh, they would also not be very conversant in, you know, spelling artists and songs. So it was really confusing for them. It was kind of a friction point. And the second you know, 
challenge that we had was how do we keep our users engaged during their busy moments? So when you're listening to music, you know, keep maybe cooking, exercising, driving, how can we empower our users to help them search for content, you know, when they're doing the secondary app? Uh, and we saw an opportunity early on in voice to enable sort of a seamless human-centric experience for our users to discover content natively through voice search. And, and we launched this feature about a year and a half back. Uh, and we've seen like fantastic adoption, uh, you know, month on month. Uh, as of now, as we speak, I think close to about one third of our searches for content on Ghana is driven through voice search. That's like massive, like 30 million searches a month on an average. Uh, we also, another interesting insight that we have seen is that we have noticed a higher affinity obviously in young adults uh, you know that 18 to 34 demo are the voice early adopters so they're driving close to about 50 percent of our searches uh, but there's another segment that 35 to 44 what i call mature adults uh, i think there is a solid adoption on that front so close to about 30 percent of our uh, you know voice interactivity is happening and then there is this subset of senior citizens or 60 plus, you know, I, I, I think they are also using, but largely is driven through devotional content and those kind of searches. Uh, another interesting insight, and when I was pulling those numbers, you know, assumption was that there was higher adoption on urban centers. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's completely uh, democratic in terms of voice adoption. I mean, the top cities that we have seen, you know, in the Hindi speaking belt, like Aligarh, Raipur, Bhopal, Dehradun. You know, these are the cities that we're seeing a higher adoption of voice based searches, uh, and which is really interesting. Uh, you know, and people in these cities are also, you know, using voice as a utility and an aid. Uh, finally, I think the last insight was, again, you know, obviously our, on our platform, males and females skewed is definitely skewed towards male, but within the female consumer base that we have, uh, the adoption of voice is higher compared to the adoption of males. Uh, you know, that was a really third interesting insight. So I'm guessing, you know, people, you know, women sitting at home or they're doing one activity, music is in the background, they use voice to kind of tune into and out. So I think those are a couple of really interesting insights that we have noticed in the last part of a year or so. Amazing, amazing. And I, I, I can totally get it. You know, you're doing something else, music is in the background. You, you, you're saying out what you want, you don't need to actually go and type it in. It, it makes so much sense. And 30 million searches a month is quite a, quite a decent size number today. Super, super. So uh, my, my next question is for Mohit Piotra. Uh, and Mohit, you know, uh, having heard that, uh, you know, the, the rural sections and, and those who, who are struggling to read and write and vernacular, uh, is is a is a territory where voice is extremely important, and the kind of work that you have done really, uh, you know, as the part of the anti pollution action group, uh, is amazing. And being part of Delhi, living staying in Delhi, I myself and, and my team is also grateful for the work that you've been done, where you that you have done. Uh, so do tell us a little bit more about uh, what you did and 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 the results that you uh, you got out of it. Thanks, thanks, Ajay. So uh, this is actually an example of something that where we used voice in the battle against stubble burning. For those of us who live in Delhi, we all know, you know, in Punjab, there's stubble burning, Haryana, etc. Uh, lots of stubble burning in the winter, which causes all the pollution in our lives. So we work with the Punjab government and uh, our emphasis is on convincing farmers to basically adopt non-burning methods. So there's a whole strategy around that. And, you know, there are numerous farmer outreach. Last year, in fact, they even backed a mass media campaign, which was an attitude change campaign. But there was one specific opportunity for which uh, Wavemaker came up with the idea. And, uh, you know, I think it's a brilliant uh, uh, idea. The opportunity is that there is a bunch of farmers, we figured through research, that there's a bunch of farmers who want to adopt non-burning techniques, but have a series of questions, just don't know who to go to. And the solution that we deployed is something called Msambad. Uh, I don't know whether you know, the viewers on this uh, session are familiar with Msambad, but it's basically a dial-in solution where up to 25,000 people can dial into a number at a pre-assigned time and actually, you know, get connected to a central call. So the idea that we went with was to connect uh, professors from Punjab Agriculture University who are experts with farmers so that farmers have the chance to ask them questions and get clarifications. Uh, 
uh, last year, basically, since we work with government, our intention was to actually demonstrate to the government that this is a, a channel worth pursuing. And so therefore, we did a very small thing. We did, did four such sessions. Uh, the results were, were very, very encouraging. So um, just to give you guys a sense about more than 15,000 farmers over the four sessions actually dialed in and listened to a professor giving gyan, which was, you know, which is significant. Uh, second, if you look at M Sambad, typically brands use it for uh, brand slugs and stuff, which are very short messages or, you know, uh, you know, typically the, the uh, interaction less than five minutes. But because ours was about disseminating information, we actually, you know, went with 30 minute sessions. And the great news is that the data showed that, you know, there was a very high uh, retention. Over 50% 50, 50 of the listeners continued beyond the first 10 minutes, which is a big break. About 20, 25% of the listeners actually listened to the whole thing. Um, Subsequently, we did some calling out, uh, we did a calling out exercise and we found to our, uh, uh, I mean, we were gratified to find that farmers all responded positively to it. The great news from all of our standpoints, not ours, but all of us who live in the North and struggle with air pollution is that the you know Department of Agriculture of Punjab have recognized the relevance of this opportunity and they've agreed to actually back this. In fact, this year, the plan was to start, you know, using it from April, which is when a series of farming decisions are taken. Unfortunately, COVID happened. So we are actually going to use it, the product in uh, September onwards when around the burning season. And the big difference is last time we didn't use the core functionality of the product because, well, I was scared. So we didn't do the live thing. So the interaction was not live. This was a recorded piece from a professor talking, answering questions, which we planted. This year, we want to go to the next level and actually run live sessions and see how that works. But really, from our standpoint, the great news is that, um, you know, the Department of Agriculture is actually going to push this hard, which means that, you know, there is an engagement between Department of Agriculture and farmers, and hopefully will convince guys not to burn. So as part of an overall strategy, this voice product plays a crucial role because it's probably the most effective way to disseminate information in an interactive form. The same information is also being uh, disseminated over videos and stuff over social media and things. But this interactivity is what we believe is the killer app that the voice, this product, M Sambad, has allowed us. I hope that uh, this thing, Ajay, is that, <clears throat> does that answer your question? Yes, yeah. Yeah, it, it does work. And, you know, um, I think it's a fantastic example of how you could use technology to do good. And, and it's such a simple insight and um, a, a big challenge that we in the North face. Uh, and you know, even a small difference, if, if we manage to make, it's a, it's a big one. Uh, That's, true. All of us. That's true. That's <laughs> true. You all live longer. <laughs> By the way, a hero in my office. So. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, coming to An Anusha. Anusha, uh, are you there? I'm very, I'm very much here, Ajay. I've... Hi. Anusha, try without the video. I'm, I'm guessing... I can't really hear you. Can you hear me now? A little bit. Anusha is uh, is hit by the uh, monsoons in Mumbai. I was I was wanting to ask Anusha about really how how she's managing it from a creative perspective, being part of the creative uh, creative agency that does a lot of work. Uh, how uh, you know how 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 are brands asking for more support here and how she's uh, Managing to support them, uh, but I guess it's, uh, it's Ajay, the can you hear me? Ah, almost. Ajay, can you hear me? Yes, Ajay, now. Can you hear yes, me? Anusha, yes, we can hear you. No, 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 no she's there. No, Anusha, it's it, it's okay, Anusha. I think, I, I think it's it's fine. <laughs> No, Anusha, we'll, we'll move on. We'll move on, Anusha. I think your connection is really bad. Barujit, I'll come to you now again, once more, with because because of the, the experience that you've got, and like you said, you've been across the spectrum. Uh, what additional uh, efforts do you believe the ecosystem needs to put together to build for voice to be more effective uh, for marketers? So how can the ecosystem support you better uh, in your efforts to use voice for, uh, for marketing? First, I must say I love Mohit's example. I'll, I'll speak to him later on, uh, on learning more of it. I just love the whole uh, purpose behind it and going after it at scale. 
I think that's the starting point of everything on voice, Ajay. I think on rather on any media interaction or any media deployment, it has to start with an objective. I think where a lot of ideas fail early is that they come with the newest, newest shiny toy in town and you have to do it because it's there. And what I found is a lot of brand teams get onto that bandwagon very early and lose uh, trust in that platform. And then it becomes a very long haul to bring people back. I think for big brands and, uh, and even, uh, even smaller brands for that matter, what's very critical is to really get onto the technology with first, what problem are we trying to solve? Are you trying to get, for example, global trend that Ravi mentioned is pretty common that you know, younger audiences increasingly are becoming difficult to get to through broadcast mediums. You need interactive voice-based mediums, invariably work out much better. Social media does work out better, but audio, uh, you know, for because it's a board generation, and with the board generation, the only way you can get in touch with them is on platforms where they're choosing to, to be with content like a Ghana as a platform. And, and that's where they're choosing to listen to the music or, or, for, my, or for that matter, people like Joe Morgan who have taught the world how to monetize his conversations that he's had over 10 years, right? And $7 billion worth of uh, monetization at that. So I think the first point is uh, start with the, create, uh, the ecosystem needs to start thinking what problem are we trying to solve? And uh, where I struggle is with a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you know, the ecosystem partners, they come in uh, with a pitch to say why this is the big shiny toy. I think the second piece is, which, uh, which Anusha would have possibly thrown greater light on, is this creative angle to it. You know, because you're using only one vector of a memory structure, which is oral, which is essentially sonic. Sonic branding is used to be how we used to be uh, for many years as brands. So if you look at Surf Excel, for example, saying you know Surf Kikri Darmi here, you didn't need to, you didn't need anybody else, and the whole uh, imagery would come to your mind very quickly, right? So what are those sonic branding elements that need to get built? How do we process sound? I think there's so much work that needs to get done around that area for brands to really truly understand. Uh, you know, the voice that you hear in a Surf Excel ad is invariably a certain, uh, has a certain grunge to it. And, and it's almost like a signature style. Now, uh, how, how do you really get to those sonic signatures? Very important. I think the third piece that's happening uh, is, uh, is this piece around. So the first angle was about which problem you're trying to solve. Second is about how do you get the creative right for audio. That's where a lot of uh, pieces need to get solved. And the third one is this measurability of impact. And I think we heard various vectors to it, whether it was Mohit's or Ajay's example, uh, is this what impact you've had. So we've done a reasonably large internal platform called, uh, called Javelin, which essentially is yeah, what we have done is we just put everything into one big massive, uh, uh, you know, uh, OBD uh, based uh, setup where we go by district based on uplift, uh, rather based on the over indexation of, uh, of mobile as a device to reach consumers and we deploy a large OBD plan every month. I think what we have found over a period of time is that uh, whether we uh, go after, for example, there's a case where we went after households that have got gas connection. Now suddenly, Wim is a pretty relevant way to wash your utensil rather than ash because ash is not available anymore at homes because you move to LPG cylinder. Uh, and it's a great way to get Wim into that household, being the largest uh, single brand uh, in India, by the way, not only in the category, in India in terms of absolute uh, absolute uh, levels of top of mind awareness. Now, if you really see, uh, you know, that solve is possible because of OBD and because of layering multiple data sets. And that's the third uh, angle of it. How do we really solve by technology uh, around two pieces, which are supply side problems? First supply side problem is voice and one angle to voice is language in India. You know, while most uh, languages, uh, you know, we have dialect changing every, every, every hundred mile, but what is very clear is that still the only language that we truly, truly cracked is Hindi. You know, uh, maybe 90% accuracy, almost all our languages pretty nascent. Uh, and uh, for obvious reasons, because of just the scale, uh, the sheer number of people you can reach and the amount of rural population in the Hindi belt. I think that's one supply side problem that needs to get solved of the ecosystem to be able to really discern dialects, languages, and more than more than Hindi. The second piece is content creators who who essentially so you have influencers today at scale on audio, video, you have on social, you have lots of influencers. There are very few uh, who are audio influencers. So ecosystem will evolve. There would be a lot of, podcasters, they would be rural podcasters who would become voices of uh, the Amin Siani's of today, so to say. 
uh, who would be the voices of uh, of tomorrow how do we find them support them create them uh, and how do we make them uh, our own right so if i really cut it down to these three uh, vectors which is content uh, the second piece is starting with objective the content uh, which is how do you get sonic branding and third piece supply side technology and uh, the creators how do we get this ecosystem together uh, with time to solve these problems at the top of the pyramid where people are choosing to listen to voice and at the bottom of the pyramid where we are they have no choice but to listen to voice right uh, and i think when that happens the interactivity of that uh, piece will will uh, give us great advantage and really bring uh, and democratize the the uh, the what do you call uh, the advantages of technology penetration in the country because we know that as digital penetrations go up Uh, there is a certain addition to gdp there are numerous numbers floating from 0.5 to 1 percentage added gdp uh, for for technology penetration and i think voice will play a very big role uh, and i love the example that mohit had and i'm sure there's so many other examples that we can empower by voice so for me these three vectors will be the big ecosystem drivers uh, ajay thanks for the you know if it's so true you need to have a an objective why are you doing it and if if that is clear and and when you have set that objective and you do something and then you map your success against the objective set is when you feel truly know whether what you've done is working uh, getting the content right getting the creators right all part of the ecosystem which which are extremely important what i'm glad is at least you know we are now talking about examples and we are sharing and that's how how it grows uh, you only learn when you experiment and I think that has been true of every new thing that has that has come into play. I remember uh, digital many years ago, fifteen uh, years ago, ten years ago. Uh, we used to always have conversations on why do we need to do it? Uh, do we need to do it at all? And only when we, we made those investments and and there was learning and then there was history to it and examples and and people knew how you know what what kind of effectiveness to expect from an investment is when it started growing and people started benefiting from it. so it's great that we are actually sharing these examples and and i'm sure you know in in that itself there'll be a lot of learning and a lot of growth in uh, in a in, a, in a extremely important uh, uh, mode of communication with our with our consumers uh, ravi in gana i know you you have a lot of advertising ajay, products if you can hear me yes we can ajay can you hear me yes we can i before my network goes bad i'm happy to Uh, yes, it, it, it'd be lovely if you could share with us some some experiences on how you've been adapting your creative product and and you know using it for uh, for uh, for experiments in voice and and some examples that you could share. Uh, sure, Ajay. I think you know uh, creative wise. I think you know the number of ideas an agency uh, like ours or anybody else. I'm sure. Can you learn for the whole space is uh, unimaginable. Uh, ideas are plenty. I think uh, we really need clients to be able to be to something void because there is definitely a lot more doubt in a client's mind about penetration levels of voice and you know whether it does just uh, whether there's a better way to spend money. Uh, so there is a lot of questions uh, in a client's mind, uh, but there's. so much to do with voice and i loved everything mohit said the whole interactive bit uh, and that's really the beauty of this uh, i think voice in any different ways you know uh, this is really nothing to do with uh, you know the creative the brand positioning or the creative idea now what needs to be done at and level or at the creative idea level needs to either way happen voice is all about manifesting Uh, into this and taking it consumer. There's just one more way to reach a consumer, a new age consumer who's leaning towards voice. Really, uh, you can use voice uh, drive your uh, brand message. You can use voice to support your brand. Uh, an example: one of our clients, Pantene. Uh, the shampoo stands for uh, anti hair fall, right? While we choose. run tv and many digital campaigns around anti hair fall for pantene the new voice to support that whole space that we are trying to own we know that a consumer is forever looking and search for ways to stop hair fall hair fall is a big challenge when it comes to women and hair really 
uh, and she can use uh, and really clarify on what the and you know very easily Pantene can own the space of hair fall, seeing those questions, answering those questions, solving hair fall related challenges and issues for the consumer, and simply integrating the whole advanced formula that Pantene stands for, which is really convenience, right? The, the consumer can use many home recipes and try and use, can use the advanced formula with Pantene because it's the convenience of using that shampoo which still prevents uh, So uh, many ways, you know, I must talk to you about a recent example of using, uh, you know, voice to act uh, trigger inspiration within creative minds within our agency itself. Uh, it is used as an internal comms tool. Uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, we built a little solution around a, uh, prompts through tasks for creative guys um, around voice, uh, around many other through briefs to you know all of the. Uh, a creative person had to do was really ask this voice uh, um, and exa or a, a, would throw a task at this creative person. Not to throw at the person, it would also inspire the person and do something really extraordinary with the creative idea. Uh, the, uh, the voice mentioned would joke, uh, it could take questions in return from a creative person. Uh, and of the creative person to actually think of something. Uh, I thought it was a beautiful way uh, to actually get everybody they group uh, to start interacting with voice uh, and to feel the power of voice as they develop new ideas, uh, uh, many things to do. Uh, I think uh, this is the space that uh, the new generation is leading to. Uh, you spoke about your 14 year old son uh, voice is what comes naturally to all of them really and this is the future so the sooner we mark how to use it and do extraordinary stuff the better for us really wonderful Anusha. fantastic that you managed to finally get a little bit of bandwidth and and it was absolutely true to the session a pure voice message <laughs> <laughs> thanks yeah absolutely thank you Great, great. Thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, no, as I was asking uh, 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 Ravi about uh, you, you've got some advertising products on on Ghana. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and how it has been used and and the effectiveness that you have seen? Sure. So, I I, I think advertising has been always been about connecting with consumers on their terms. Uh, you know, and with change in user preferences, uh, clearly those terms and conditions are changing. Uh, voice advertising is still nascent, uh, and it's, it's a new way to reach out to people in a very native, intuitive manner. And so we launched voice ads about a year back, uh, and we believe that timing is perfect. You know, we are, we are talking about increasing screen fatigue uh, that we're noticing. I was reading some research uh, in the US, on an average, a person gets about 5,000 ads on his mobile phone a day. Uh, you know, increasing ad awareness. So, and most ads are unidimensional. Uh, you know, voice ads, uh, voice dialogue ads are allowed users to speak with ads, you know, literally having an emotional conversation with a brand. It's a two way uh, messaging. Uh, and I think our research kind of says that people who, who are likely to remember and respond better when there is always, when something is verbally stated to them. Uh, and, and that kind of helps us really empower that. Uh, piece of communication for our brands. We're also kind of solving the click-throughs on audio ads. So, you know, typically audio ads will always have a, you know, someone will have to open the phone and click, but with voice, uh, intuitively you can reach to a landing page uh, for a brand or, or go to a playlist and, you know, and in this manner, kind of you, you gain more insights. So over the past about a year, I mean, we have been selling pizzas and chocolates and, uh, you know, banking solutions as well as uh, cars. So different categories have experimented, QSR, tech, auto, CPGs. Uh, and we believe that it's, it's a really frictionless environment to reach brands and users. And you can immediately measure an intent with a yes or a no. Or the moment a user is interacting, you kind of measure is an immediate response to an ad. It's completely less intrusive. 
uh, and a brand gets to get you know 100% share of voice. So I, I think these are really compelling factors for voice, uh, you know, ads to be considered as as a strong and powerful. Media. Uh, and we have been. I'm, I'll be happy to share case studies if anyone wants interested of the, some of the campaigns that we have done. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Ravi. Uh, and uh, we 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 hit time, so uh, we we'll end now. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for your time, Mohit, uh, Ajay, Gauravjit, Anusha, Ravi. Thank you so much. Lovely insight there. Yeah, have a very good evening. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you for having us. Yeah.